Whoa. Where am I? Wow, okay. Well, can't be that bad. I guess I'll just go ahead and call... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. My phone doesn't work at all. I guess I can look around and see if there's something that I can use to help me. Hey, what's that? Wow, look at that. How convenient. A solar panel just laying here. If I take this dead phone, plug it in with the cable provided, and then arrange the solar panel so it's facing the sun. Look, you can see that it recognizes that it's charging, but still needs a while. It looks like we're gonna be saved. So this project took me the better part of a month and a half from concept to completion, and that was mainly because I made a crucial mistake at the very beginning. I used one of these. Um, this is an LM7805 linear 5 volt volt voltage regulator, and I learned quickly that this linear regulator is not something you want to be using when you're trying to save power, especially with something like a solar panel. So here's the reason why linear regulators are not good. If we use our laser thermometer to measure the temperature of the case of the voltage regulator, we can see that we're getting a maximum of about 38.4 degrees Celsius. All right, now that we know not to use a linear regulator, let's go through the steps of designing the circuit board, installing and calibrating the DC to DC buck converter, and hooking everything together in one homogenous system. Ta-da! It's two weeks later, and the, the next batch of goodies has arrived from China. Um, in this batch right here, we got some DC to DC buck converters. We've got input here on the left, output here on the right with these little pads, and this little trim potentiometer right here. This is what we use to set the output voltage. So we use a small flathead screwdriver to turn that little brass knob, and that adjusts the output voltage. All right, so first let's use these wires, this uh, buck converter, and this breadboard right here to prototype our circuit. All right, so when you're done, everything should look something like this. You start with the input wires coming from the power rails on the breadboard, that goes into the buck converter. From the buck converter, the output goes to the each one of the pins, the left pin and the right pin of the USB port. So that's just the positive and the negative. And then we've got the resistor dividers here going to the center pins. And these center pins are the data positive and the data minus. And this tells the phone with what current to charge. Don't worry, if this is a bit difficult to follow, I'm posting a schematic in the description as well as one on the Instructable. We're going to be dialing this until we get an exact 5 volts at the output. So I'm watching the multimeter, and as I'm watching the multimeter, I'm using a small flathead screwdriver to turn the potentiometer in one direction. And as you can see, the voltage is lowering until we get exactly five volts. Keep going, nine, eight, seven, six, five and a half, 5.3.2.1, and five point Zero. Once you have the output voltage of the buck converter where you want it, don't forget to put a drop of super glue on the trim potentiometer's adjustment knob so it doesn't turn by accident. Score the board, then snap it out. Don't forget to sand down the rough edges of the perf board that you just snapped out. This is what my setup looks like before I've soldered it all together. Um, I've got the board coming most of the way to the edge of the um, USB port and it's sticking out the back and we've got the four resistors put in place and we've got the positive and negative uh, power pads over on the right. If this right here looks just a bit too confusing, just solder along with the schematic in the description. All right, so I know I wanna add this little green indicator LED to the solar panel so that I'll always know whether or not it's charging. On top of that, I also wanna remove the blue indicator LED from this DC to DC buck converter. When you run the calculations, we come up with a 220 ohm resistor required if the input voltage is five volts. So let's go ahead and solder that up, drill a hole in the top of the solar panel and glue it in place. Find a suitably sized drill bit, something a little bit larger than five millimeters 
however definitely smaller than 6 millimeters, as those are the dimensions of the LED. Stick the LED through the hole, glue it in place, and you're all set. Next, maneuver the circuit in place and make sure you get the LED through the hole that you drilled in the panel earlier. Don't forget to glue everything down. Solder the output of the DC to DC boost converter to the input of the USB connector, like so. Add a piece of heat shrink tubing and don't forget to shrink it up with a lighter. You're 90% done. You only have two steps left. All you need to do now is take the completed circuit board with USB hub, along with the DC to DC buck converter, and attach the converter's input leads to the positive and negative of the solar panel's outputs respectively. Make sure that you have the blue trimmed potentiometer set to where the output is 5.2 volts, and super glue everything in place. Congratulations, you've successfully made a solar panel phone charger that will get you out of any sticky situation. If any part of this process didn't make sense to you, Please check out my Instructable tutorial by clicking on the Instructable robot right there. This phone charger doesn't use any batteries and therefore is perfect to pack in that go bag or survival kit of yours. Thanks again everyone, and if you liked what you saw, please consider supporting me. Your support for this video can be shown by subscribing, giving a thumbs up to this video, and sharing it with all of your friends. Thanks again everyone, bye.